In this video, we will be creating some incredible 3D style videos using images. Creating these 3D style videos can seem daunting, but I'll take you through it step by step. And you'll be creating some awesome 3D videos in no time. They are extremely useful. From creating captivating shorts, to engaging social media posts, and they are great for storytelling. We will be using Adobe Photoshop and After Effects in this video. If you don't already own them, I've left a link below for a free trial. I'll be animating two different videos today, both with slightly different styles. So to start off with, I'll import one of the images I made into Photoshop. So I've created this image using Midjourney. So as you can see, I've gone for a kind of cartoon looking image here. You don't have to use Midjourney to create your images. You can use any other AI image generation software, but I really like the images that Midjourney generates. If you don't know how to make an AI image using Midjourney, then feel free to check out our Learn the Basics of Midjourney video. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. An important thing for creating these three dimensional kind of videos is you want layers in the image. As you can see in this one, there are people in the image, but there are people standing further away and closer to the camera. So what I'll do is I'll cut them into different layers and then we'll have a camera move through them to make a kind of three dimensional scene. So I'll just create a copy of this image just because I like having a backup layer of the original image. And here you can see there is the object selection tool. Now what this tool does, it should just identify an object that your cursor is hovering over. So it should select that object. As you can see, it's selected this man on the right. But the problem is it sometimes doesn't select the whole thing that you want it to select. So as you can see here, it hasn't selected his hand. So now I'll do some further adjustments to it. For this, I like to use the polygonal lasso tool and I'll zoom right in just so I can get those extra bits. So here is eyebrow and a bit of his eye and some of his lip. And you just move the cursor around and click to the points around where you want to select. And once you've selected the object for that layer, make sure to copy it. So once we've copied that selection, we want to fill in behind it with a blank slate. So this is where generative fill comes in. And what generative fill does, it will see the selection that you've made and try fill it with what's around it to kind of make it look like that object was never there. So I've selected it, I've pressed generative fill and it's filled in that gap. And it gives you a few options. Now I've pasted in that layer we created. So you, as you can see, I can just move him around wherever I want. I didn't like what the generative fill made for me. So I'm gonna to select to that area again. Make sure you're on the background layer, like from the original image and select around to that area that you want to fill in. So I'll do generative fill on that original background layer. It's done a really good job of filling in where that man would be. As you can see, it looks pretty natural. Obviously some of the people in the background are a bit distorted, but I wouldn't worry too much about that because we will be kind of putting that guys layer over the top of that anyway. Because generative fill creates a new layer, I like to put that layer and put it back onto the original background layer. So as you can see here, I'll right click it and click merge down. So it just creates one image. It just makes it easier so you don't have loads of different layers everywhere. Make sure to name these layers. So I've got the background layer and I'll label that new copy of the man, man right. So now I'll do the lady on the left. I'll use that selection tool to get most of the selection around her. And it's done a pretty good job. Just need to do a few further adjustments and copy and paste that back into the scene. And then go back to the background layer and select where she was. Copy her layer back in. I'll just make her layer invisible so I can do the generative fill behind her on the background layer. So just select where she was and it's done a pretty good job. And just pick the version that you like. You can keep generating new generative fills as well, just in case you don't like the original ones. And then I'll just make her layer visible again, just so we can see what it looks like. And I'll layer her lady left. As you can see, I can turn their layers off just to see what the background layer looks like. 
Now I'm going to select this other guy on the right. And once again, just do some further adjustments and copy and paste him back in. Turn the visibility off his layer so we can go back to the background layer and select where he was, generative fill, and it fills in where he was. And just pick the one that you like and make those layers visible again. Great. And don't worry about moving the layers around too much now because we'll be doing that in After Effects. And now I want to make the people behind this main group of people a bit blurrier. So I'm going to select these last few people that are in focus and then I will blur around them just to kind of separate them a bit more. Now that I've selected them, you can actually choose to inverse the selection. I'll select all the area around the selection I've made, which is the crowd in the background. And then I'll go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And as you can see, oh, it goes a bit wild, but you can choose to just kind of make that layer look a bit more separate to put focus on the, um, the people in the middle. I'll just do a bit of cropping. So we've got all the layers now that we need to create the 3D video. So now we will save those individual layers as PNGs. The easiest way is to just right click the layer and quick export as PNG and just save it to one of your folders on your computer. So once you've saved all of your layers, we're gonna import them into After Effects. Make sure your project file is the same size of the video that you want to create. So for this one, I'm just doing a 1080p kind of normal full HD sized video. Okay, so I've imported the images. You may have to resize some of the layers just to fit into the, um, the window. And just move the layers about to kind of roughly where you want them. Now we want to turn these layers into 3D layers. So if you come down here, you can see these little boxes below that cube. Now just make sure to check all of these and then come over to the view panel here and click two views. This view just makes it easier to see how far the layers are from each other. So you wanna make sure that the background layer is furthest away from all of the others and then kind of break up the other layers in between that. So if I select the background layer and then I use this arrow, which will push it away, I'll just drag that. And as you can see, it's going further away and it's getting smaller in the view because it is obviously a 3D layer now, and the further away it gets, the smaller it will look to us. So what we want to do now is just go into the transform options of that layer and just scale it up so it fits into our viewer. And then just make sure to separate the layers just to make a bit of a gap between them. So just moving these around. So now I'm going to add a camera layer. Now this will allow us to kind of move around the scene that we've created. So just come up to layer, new and camera and just make sure enable depth of field is on and click OK. Now as you can see here you can kind of move the camera in and out and you get to see that kind of parallax effect that's happening because of the separation between the layers. So just make sure you zoom in a bit or move the camera in just to make sure all the layers are in that viewer and there's no black empty spaces in there. Now, because we've got depth of field set to on, you can change the aperture levels. Now, the higher the aperture just means whatever's not in focus will get even blurrier. What you can do is you can actually set a certain layer to always be in focus, which is what I like to do most of the time. Otherwise, you can just have a set focus point, And as the camera moves in, the focus will just be on that one certain plane. So you can get different layers coming in and out of focus. For this one, I want the main group in the background to be in focus the whole time. So what you can do here is click on the camera layer and then control click on the layer that you want to stay in focus so that they're both selected and then come up to layer, camera and then link focus distance to layer so that it always makes sure that layer is in focus. Now we're gonna add some keyframes so we can start getting some movement into this video. So just click that stopwatch to generate a keyframe for point of interest, position, orientation, and aperture. And then just move the slider, say five seconds into the timeline and start messing around with these settings. So I'm gonna move the position in to create a nice zoom kind of effect, or like the person with the camera is moving through the crowd. And then you can start just moving the other settings in that point of interest. 
So here it's kind of moving the angles. Just have a play around with the position of the camera to kind of get the shot that you're looking for. And for this image, I want it to be like the camera is moving through the crowd of people and it finally gets to that, that crowds that we're kind of focusing on this whole time. And just keep doing micro adjustments. And if I just play it back, I think that looks really good. You can see, definitely feel there's depth in the image. And because we've separated those layers from each other, it's really generated some like nice depth to the image. And just make sure to move your keyframes the ones that you set at the start to the very start of the video and then the ones that you made at the end of your animation to however long you want the video to be. So for this one, I'll only make it about six seconds, say. But you can make the video as long as you want. So now I want to try a slightly different looking video as the one I just made was going through the images. But for the next one, I want it to move more horizontally and to have that parallax effect. So I generated this awesome image of a knight battling off against a dragon. The important thing is that you can see there's three clear layers. So we've got the foreground layer, which is the knight, and then the middle layer, which is the dragon, and the background, which is the blurry battlefield. So now I'll do the same process that we did with the first video. I will cut out the individual layers and use generative fill to fill in behind them. And as you can see, Generative Fill did an amazing job. So I've imported those layers into After Effects now, and I'll just do the same as what we did before. So just turn them into 3D layers, add the camera layer, and then start to add movement. And I'll actually animate the individual layers, so I'll add keyframes to them and move them horizontally. I'll animate the knight to move left, and the dragon to move right. So when the camera zooms in, it adds a parallax effect. Now we're going to add an extra bit of flair to these videos. So at the moment, we've just got static layers moving. What we can actually do now is add some elements to it. There's a really good website where you can download some free elements from, and it's called Vect Easy. They have both free and paid content. I want to try and find some fiery embers so that I can put it in between the knight and the dragon. So once you're in Vecteezy, there are different options you can choose from. But I'm going to use videos and I'll write in embers. And here, as you can see in the top left, it will say which ones are free and which ones are not. So I'll just find one that I like. There's tons of really good free options. I really like this one. And you just click on it and do a free download. So once that's downloaded, I'll just drag it into After Effects. The problem here is the video has a black background on it. To fix this, we want to change the blending mode. And I'll change it to screen. And as you can see, it's got rid of that black kind of background that the embers had. And you can just move that around. What I'll do is I'll just change the opacity on this ember layer. And I'm going to add a bit of blur to those embers just so it's not too distracting. So if I come up to effects, blur, and Gaussian blur. Then if we change blurriness, as you can see, they get quite blurry. And if I play that back, and just make sure it's behind the night layer, because I don't want it over all of it. I think that's looking really good. You can add as many elements as you want to your videos. And for this one, I want to add a little glint on the sword and kind of animate it moving down the sword as the camera's moving. After Effects has a really good light flares built into it. So if you go into Effects and Presets, I'll write in Light, go to Light Flares, and drag that onto the Night layer. And as you can see, it's created a nice light flare there. It's a bit too extreme at this point, but I'll add it onto the sword, and you can pick between all of these different light flares here. And I'll change the intensity. Cool, quite like that. And now let's have a look at animating that element. Just come down here to effects, and to light flares. You can see it's sticking to that layer, but at the end of this shot, I want it to move. So I'll put a keyframe on that and I want it to move 
It's a bit further down. Cool, so we've added in a couple of elements into this video, and I think it looks really good. Got the embers coming in, and that glint on the sword. It just helps it kind of bring everything together and create a really immersive 3D looking video. Which is pretty impressive considering it just started out as a static image. You can add as many elements as you want. As you can see here, I added in some heat waves, which looks really dramatic. And to take it even further, you can also add in sound effects. There are loads of other ways you can use this method, as you can see from these examples. Alright, so we've reached the end of this video. I think this method is really cool because you can turn an image into something completely different, and not just a video from like other video AI generators. And I've actually created another video on how to create these 3D style videos. But instead of using paid software, that video uses all free software, which is awesome. So feel free to check that out. I've left a link to it in the description box below. If you've learned anything, please give us a thumbs up. And feel free to subscribe for more videos like this. I hope it's inspired you to create some really cool 3D looking videos. And don't forget to check out the other video on how to create 3D style videos, but using free software. Just click the thumbnail on the screen right now. You won't want to miss it.